Hey everyone, I'm Holly Wingerski. And I'm Matt Covey. And we're with Suburban Canine. We get a lot of questions on e-collar use, so we made this video today just to answer some of the questions that we get asked all the time. First thing I want to throw out there is we don't believe in ever training on an e-collar. And what I mean by that is we don't teach a dog anything with an e-collar, we layer, we layer it on top of their obedience. So what that means is we make sure a dog learns how to heal, sit, down, stay, come, and they're proficient at all of that. And then we layer an e-collar on top of it and we only use it basically for two reasons. One is to get their attention when they're too far away and they simply can't hear us or as a correction tool for a command they already know. This is really important. Not every company trains this way. And honestly, when we get a new client and they tell us they've already trained on an e-collar with another company, we really kind of cringe a little bit and worry about how that training might have been done. So the collar I'm going to be showing today is the Dogtra Arc. So we sell the brand Dogtra. It's our favorite brand to recommend. It's the best brand on the market that we have honestly seen so far. Mm -hmm. So um, certain things we look for with e-collars, of course, is one, correction level. So this specific collar has 127 levels. So there's a lot of room to kind of pick and choose what your dog's number is. It's better to have more levels, of course, than less. Also, this has a three-fourth mile range, which is honestly quite far. I can't think of really any time that my dog is actually three-fourths of a mile away from me. Anytime I talk to my clients about it, I always say cut a third of that off because of the fact that typically it's tested in an open field where there's no obstructions or anything. Also, with this, this is 100% waterproof. So my dog loves swimming. He goes, you know, in a lake, he jumps into a pool. This is 100% waterproof. I could still use it as needed without any worry. And he responds really well to it. So those are my favorite things about this specific e-collar. I'm now going to get into the fit of the e-collar. Alrighty, so as I mentioned, this is the dog to arc. As you can see, it has a comfort pad on right now. So these are extenders that I use. Typically, if these were not here, there would be a prod here and a prod here. I use this because it helps me get better contact with Anakin. You could check out our uh, description and we have a video that specifically talks about this contact pad. With that, you want the collar to fit snug on your dog so it's not sliding all over the place, like I said, for contact purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put it on Anakin and it fits on the sides of his neck. So you want it either on this side or this side, has the most muscle mass. With that being said, it's easier to get contact that way. You want it to be quite snug and you don't want it to be sliding all over. So it should be a little difficult for me to get my fingers underneath. And then I just pop it right on in and it's like a belt mechanism. So with that, it's not a buckle. And then I know it's a lot more secure on his neck. So now that it's on his neck, we're gonna cover some training and see how he does. Alrighty, so I'm going to show you some of the buttons on the dog trick collar. So as you can see, right here is a gray button, orange button, orange button, gray button. I'm not going to have you worry about the orange today. That is if you were to get the expandable collar, then one remote controls two dogs, which is another awesome perk. This button right here, the front button, is the vibrate pager. So anytime I call Anakin, I use this as well. And he knows it means to come find me. It's a positive part of the co collar. It's very similar to pagers for humans. Back in the day when you'd have a pager on, it would vibrate and you're like, oh, gotta go find whoever it is paged me, right? Same thing for dogs. The correction function is if he's just, you know, I page him, he's not paying attention. He might see a deer, he might see a squirrel. I quickly tap it and then I'll call him again with the pager button. Also, there is nick and continuous. So there's a little toggle that pushes up and down here. I usually will keep it on continuous. Nick has its uses, but most dogs do really well with continuous. It just means if I were to hold the correction, it's constant, whereas a nick is a slight tap. And often dogs don't feel that slight tap. Up here is the toggle that controls the levels. Anakin is at a 15, which is a lower level. And then here is the on and off button. So now I'm gonna kind of show off how I call him and then also show off how he could do e-collar heel. Come on, go eat, go, go, go get him. All righty, so now I'm gonna show off the pager function of the e-collar. So we're using a stick distraction. He's clearly wanting to be by mom right now. So we're gonna get Matt to play with him and he's wanting attention instead. So I'm gonna use the vibrate command and I'm gonna call him. Anakin, come. Yay, good boy. Anakin, sit. Good boy. And just like that, you could see he felt the vibrate. He knew it meant to come to mom and I always give him praise every single time he comes to me. Now, I'm gonna show you e-collar heel and how I utilize that when training with Anakin. 
All right, so now we're gonna be covering e-collar heel. A couple of things to keep in mind before you teach your dog e-collar heel, you of course wanna make sure they do really well with their leash and collar. So Anakin has mastered that at this point. And then I of course taught him regular off-leash heel before jumping to e-collar heel. So you always wanna start with the baby steps and then get to this. Times I like to use e-collar heel is when I take him off-leash hiking. So what I'll usually do is I let him have his freedom. If I hear people or dogs coming, I'll quickly say Anakin heel. If he doesn't fall back to my side, I'll tap that correction. He's at the point where he understands what that means, so it works really well. I haven't even really needed to use it much, and he's doing an awesome job. We've talked about how to use the e-collar for off-leash come and also for off-leash heel. The third time we use an e-collar is to stop undesirable behaviors, things such as barking and jumping. I mentioned this at the start of the video, but it's really important that your dog is well trained before you use an e-collar. This doesn't just apply to obedience commands. It also it applies to the, the house rules, jumping, barking, nipping, all of those things. So what we do is we make sure the dog understands their rules. They understand what they're supposed to do, what they're not supposed to do. We proof the word no, meaning we teach the dog what no means. We make sure we have their respect. And we also evaluate their lifestyle. I mean, we make sure they're getting enough exercise and enough stimulation on it on every single day. Once we've hit that point, we've covered all of our bases, then we'll bring in an e-collar and we can use that to stop undesirable behaviors.